All right, so the frustrating thing about this device for breaking beams is that I find that beams rarely behave as they should mathematically. All right, so here we have a full cross-section timber. It is supposed to uh, be a scaled down eight by 10. Gabe has created some beautiful uh, versions of the eight by eight with a double dovetail on each side. And then also made us some beams with that tusk mortise right on the side. So obviously we would expect this to be the strongest, this to be the second strongest, and this to be the weakest. So we'll just see how that all pans out. But as I said, <coughs> it's rarely as the numbers predict. So you'll notice that I have this big block of steel here. And this block of steel is attempting to take our point load and turn it into more of a uniformly distributed load. All right, so it is obviously gonna make this beam perform better than if we just had this point load. But that's, we, we based our numbers that WL over eight was a uniformly distributed load that should be acting all the way across the beam. This is what I have to, to sort of imitate that load. So it's kind of fun to get a couple of people, one person um, actually activating the ram, it's just a hand pump that pushes this down and then someone else simultaneously reading the load that we get to before the thing breaks. So the white numbers are in US tons. So we're already up to um, two tons on this little guy. So can I get a couple of volunteers? Just a warning, it often is very loud when it breaks. It's like a, almost like a gun blast. Did you say it's very loud? Is that what you said? What's that? Did you already say it's at two tons? Yeah, it's at two tons right now. Yep. 4,000 pounds. I guess I'm going to have to do this myself. I'll be useful, Jack. I tried to look super pathetic as I was doing it. What are we going to? Just until it breaks? Yeah, you just. Watch what the peak is? Well, right. You just want to sort of be calling the numbers out as we go so we have sort of a running commentary. Four thousand tons. Four thousand tons. <laughs> Five tons. Again, some cracking. Uh, we're kind of staying steady around five. Oh, going up five and a quarter. Oh, he's Five and a half. Really well. Here we go. Getting towards six. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> what happens is that the wood yields and then the load becomes less, so you want to kind of stay on top of it. Yeah, try and increase that load as much. There it is. Maybe six. No, six. Six tons. Six tons. All right, so what kind of a failure did we get? Anyone? Really? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bending moment failure, right? We've got, we had the tensile failure of the wood on the bottom, and notice where it emanated. See this little knot right here? Right, that's where it started. Should have. I didn't even crown it either. That's the other thing. All right, so if you spin that knob back there, Mary, it'll pull the ram back. Yeah, that was very calculated. Yep. It's about six tons. No, it was a calculated failure. It would be calculated for failure. We didn't do that for the 8x10. We, we could do that, but we don't have a number. I don't have one off the top of my head. <laughs> Isn't that the way I sound already? <laughs> All right, who's next? The double dovetail.
Dude, he found the grease trap on the grill. Yeah, it's He did that yesterday, too. He's got like a lead line gut. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> Got a major failure on the back side here. I think you got it. So where do we get to? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. So good. It's behaving well today. All right, so <clears throat> just a sort of practical note, um, because we know that the tension side usually fails first because of the natural defects in wood, we will favor the top of the beam just a little bit. All right, so we've left a little more wood down here on the tension side, a little less wood. Um, usually we, we offset it by an inch if it's an eight by 10. All right, who's next? Where's Jeff? Wasn't Jeff asking? What? Oh, there's Jeff. I'm hey, right Jeff. here. I'm sneaking up on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to, want to break things. I don't. Zero. Oh, how bad your ear actually is. <laughs> so it's like. Well done. That's, I, I would call that a, uh, a bending moment failure. It's, you can see you get big stress concentrations at the corners anytime you have a hard corner in wood. And so it broke there and broke here. If we had rounded these off and, and devised a tenon with similar rounded edges, um, it significantly reduces those stress concentrations. So we probably would have gotten to a higher mm -hmm. load than we do here. There you go, do. Yeah. Airplane windows Good boy. used to be square. <laughs> Airplane windows used to be square, and they're now oval for that exact reason. Hmm. Well, Interesting. Easy, my guy. Uh, round more <laughs> so, there you go, what if you were to have... Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.